So the most famous survival rule when it comes to encounters with bears is to stay still and pretend you aren't a living thing. But this rule won't work with all bears, only with grizzlies and brown ones. If you're in North America, you'll find those in Alaska, Washington, Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming. Black bears, the ones you need to run away from, live in a larger territory. You can find them in 40 states, much of Canada, and even part of northern Mexico. So, if you're hiking in Yellowstone, you could run into either a black bear or a grizzly. But let's say you're in California. The bear you accidentally meet is most likely a black one. And no, you can't just tell the difference by the color of its fur. Black bears can be black, brown, cinnamon, blonde, blue-gray, or even white. It's uh, getting complicated, isn't it? If you notice a hump at the shoulders of your unexpected date, it's a grizzly. Black bears don't have those. A grizzly will also have a dished face, round ears, and long, light-colored claws. A black bear has a straight dog-like muzzle, pointed ears, and dark claws. We'll have a quiz on this later. <laughs> Maybe. So if you're sure it's a grizzly or a brown bear, lie down. Take a fetal position, tuck your knees to your chest, and cover your head to show the bear you won't hurt them. These big guys mostly attack if they feel there's a threat to them. You can never outrun them, so don't even try. If they see you're a harmless little human, in 99% of cases, the bear will pass by. Wait for two or three minutes until you can't hear the bear anywhere near. It might hang out in the area to make sure you didn't stand up and, if you did, get into attack mode. If you pack well for emergencies and have bear spray on you, take off the safety clip when the bear is around 60 feet away and spray the bear. Aim slightly below its face. It's more effective than just assuming the fetal position. When the bear leaves, run away for safety in the opposite direction from the predator. Got all that? Good. If you're dealing with a black bear, it won't stop if it sees you in a fetal position on the ground. If you don't have bear spray on you and the bear is clearly interested in you, show it who's boss. Throw rocks or your stuff at it. Shout, hey bear, loudly. Clap, make yourself look bigger by raising your arms and jacket. Climb on a rock or a stump. Do whatever it takes to scare it. Black bears are a lot like those bad guys at school who want to steal your lunch. They'll often give up if they see you can stand up for yourself. Hmm. If the bear gets dangerously close to you, hit it in the eyes or nose and try to shock or stun it to make your unwanted hiking partner flee in fear. If the bear, no matter which type, is just sitting in the distance and staring at you, try to shuffle away super slowly. Move sideways as a slight angle so you don't trip as you backpedal away from this guy. This way, the bear won't think that you're trying to run away and won't be triggered to chase you. Talk calmly to yourself to show the bear that you're a human. Singing also helps. Hey, maybe she'll know the tune. Avoid direct eye contact with the animal and never stand between the cubs and their mother. Don't freak out if the bear stands on his hind legs. It's not an aggressive move. Says right here. In case you ever plan to visit an area populated with polar bears, don't go without a bear deterrent, like a tank. Healthy polar bear males weigh half a ton, stand 8 feet tall on his hind legs, and can chase prey at 25 miles per hour. So don't go out alone. Hike with others and talk while you hike to indicate you're a group of humans. Remember, not all polar bears are mean predators who want to have you for lunch. Some of them are just going somewhere. If you spot one with your head down, stalking in, not trying to go somewhere but definitely trying to focus on people, that's when you should be alarmed. Move away from the bear slowly. Don't run. Only if the bear gets close to you, use your deterrence. Some people claim that ammonia is a great bear repellent. Bears really don't like it. So if you soak some rags in it and throw them in your garbage, the brown guests shouldn't bother you. And if you meet a bear in the wild and it's not that into you, ammonia could help you repel it. But it also destroys the nasal passages, leaving the animal without its sense of smell, which means it won't be able to sniff out food. It can also annoy a bear who wasn't planning to charge after you and provoke it to do so. Anything that smells interesting to bears, 
like food and stinky garbage, will make them notice you and come to check your camp out. So cook away from the camp and don't litter. If you put bear spray on your tent, you might attract unwanted fluffy guests. The pepper products in it smell like food, so that could be one way to attract bears. If you notice a bear standing along the road, resist the urge to stop and take photos. Move at least 100 yards away and pull over to a safe location. Roadside bears quickly get used to humans and traffic noise, which can become dangerous for their lives. And they're more likely to approach campgrounds and picnic areas in search of human food. People who live close to the wilderness and on the mountains are used to bear visitors and don't fear them. Douglas Harder spotted a mother black bear and her two cubs emptying the bird feeder on his second-story deck. Once he returned home after a while and found that a bear had broken into his kitchen through a partially open sliding door. The uninvited guest had scratched up a wall and stolen some junk food before running away. Harder just finished cleaning up after the bear when a cub shoved its face through the cat door. Its photos went viral online. Then there's Kristen Jones. She was visiting her parents in North Carolina and decided to do some yoga on the bank of a nearby lake. She was using earbuds and didn't hear the bear approach her from the back. Suddenly, she felt someone sniffing and licking her neck. She thought it was her neighbor's dog and stretched her arm to pet it, and that scared away the animal. Kristen managed to snap a couple of photos of the bear moving away, although no one believed the licking story. She remembers this as the scariest moment of her life and hopes it will never repeat. As for the bear, he was most likely spotted in the area looking for food in trash cans and on other people's decks. Scientists who observe polar bears note how incredibly smart these animals are. Members of Polar Bears International have captured hundreds of photos to better study these animals. Before they started using a special cage, they would take photos using a camera that was on the end of a long pole that would be lowered from a height. One day, the camera's flash went off right in front of a bear's face. He didn't appreciate the paparazzi move, but instead of ruining the camera, the bear calmly extended one arm. Then, it stretched one claw and touched the lip of the camera's lens. The animal kept the claw inside and wouldn't let go of the camera. The photographer was trying to move the pole, but it was pointless. After 15 minutes, the bear looked up at him and finally let go of the equipment. It looked like it was trying to send a message never to use a flash on it again. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.